Hello and welcome back to Grade 9 Chemistry. This is still Sir Carlos and uh, we are still trying to finish learning competency number 3, explain the formation of ionic and covalent bonds. So, if you want to follow through with uh, reading material, we have your learner's module. You open it in Unit 2, Module 2, pages 26 to 28. This session is going to be divided into three parts, a discussion on octet rule, activity number 3, bonding by transfer of electrons, and a discussion on electronegativity difference. So let's begin. And so um, the octet rule uh, comes from, of course, that root word off, which means 8. All right, so um, 8, just keep that in mind. Octet and it's a rule on 8. So atoms always strive to attain the most stable arrangement of electrons. And atoms are said to be stable if their electrons have the same kind of arrangement as that of noble gases, where the s and p orbitals are filled with electrons except for helium, where only the s orbitals are filled up. In the case of helium, there are only two electrons na magpapasatisfy sa kanya. Pero with the rest of the um, noble gases, starting from argon until organesson, uh, they all have uh, eight uh, electrons uh, in their uh, in their valence shell. So they are they are all uh, said to be stable. Okay? That's what makes these gases noble. The, that's what makes these gases uh, well not non-reactive or not too reactive. Okay, because stable na sila. They are not no longer go, uh, looking for a way for them to be satisfied. Okay, they are already stable. They already have eight electrons, pero except helium. Now, the octet rule tells you that elements gain or lose or share electrons to achieve the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. So take note of this. When an element gains or loses, electrons uh, it is involved in an ionic uh, bonding whereas if an element uh, shares electrons to achieve the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas that element was involved in a polar in a, in a covalent bond that can either be polar or nonpolar and so such as in the case of calcium and chlorine to produce calcium, calcium chloride so calcium here has two valence electrons whereas chlorines each of these chlorines they have seven valence electrons. So, um, calcium is going to lose uh, one uh, valence electron to a chlorine and another one to another chlorine. And the 4s2, yung two electrons in its valence shell, are going to be uh, removed, okay? Making calcium have the electronic configuration of argon. Okay, kamukha na ng calcium, yung electronic configuration ng calcium, yung electronic configuration ng Argon. It's the nearest noble gas to calcium. Okay, next one is chlorine. So each of these chlorines, they have seven, um, seven electrons in their valence shell. So S3, S2, and 3P5. Okay, but uh, upon receiving one electron from calcium, uh, it became 3S2, 3P6, and 2 plus 6 becomes 8. Therefore, um, chlorine has a stable uh, is, is already a stable atom now. So, for each of these two chlorines, stable na yung mga atoms nila. Now, that is in the case of gaining and losing electrons. How about for sharing? Uh, so, in the case of sharing, halimbawa, in the case of uh, nitrogen and three hydrogens, nitrogen here has five uh, valence electrons. So, what happens here now is that... Um, these five are bonded, uh, each of uh, uh, the, these three uh, right here are bonded with um, one hydrogen each. So, anong nangyayari niyan? Uh, hindi siya nag-lose ng electron, hindi rin nagbigay ng electron sa mga hydrogen na to. They are just sharing electrons. Uh, thus, the sharing of electrons is represented by these lines. So, uh, one end of the line is one electron, one end of the line is another electron, and the line between them that connects them is going to be the symbolizing the sharing. So, ganito siya niyan. Um, nitrogen, instead of only having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons, will be having now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons. Okay, and then hydrogen now, instead of only having 1 electron, will be sharing 1 more with nitrogen, thus making each hydrogen have 2 electrons. So, from 1s1, naging 1s2 na sila. So, more stable. From uh, 2s2, naging 2p6 na siya, it's more stable. Okay, so metals have low electronegativity and ionization energy. Thus, they tend to transfer or lose electrons. So metals such as calcium, kaya ngayon calcium ang nabibigay kanina ng electron. 
Now, nonmetals have high electronegativity and ionization energy. They have greater tendency to attract electrons towards themselves. Kaya ang mga nonmetals, they tend to gain electrons and not lose them. So, that is the octet rule. So, remember, uh, eight, the rule of eight. We now move on to activity number three, bonding of, by transfer of electrons. And we have the following objectives. So for the first objective, uh, you, would, you should be able to illustrate how an ionic bond is formed. And then for the second end objective, you are supposed to show how ions are formed. So the following are the materials that you will be needing, a paper, a piece of paper, pencil, and the periodic table. Okay, so step one is you have to select a, a metallic or an, and a non-metallic element. So go ahead, go, look, look at your periodic table and um, select a metallic and a non-metallic element. So one metallic, one non-metallic. Now write the Lewis symbol of the selected elements. If you do not know how to get their Lewis symbols yet, you can actually do the uh, examples, okay? Do the operations in the previous example set and from example A to example F. Okay, so take note of the electronegativity value of both elements. So subtract the electronegativity value of the metallic element from the non-metallic element. Again, yung um andaw dun, di ba may, may terms dun, di ba? Yung subtrahend, high difference. So parang na, kalimutan ko na. Pero kumbaga, isa subtract mo yung value, electronegativity value ng metallic element mula dun sa value ng electronegativity value ng non-metallic element. Okay, so, kumbaga, yeah, ganun yung gagawin mo. Such as in this case, so, sodium with an electronegativity value of 0 0.9 and chlorine with an electronegativity value of 3.0. So, paano yung gagawin dyan? Yung 3.0, okay, siya yung nandito. And then yung 0 0.9, siya yung nandito. Kasi, this is the, the metal. So, you're supposed to subtract the value from the metal from the value of non-metal. And you will be getting, in this case, 2.10. Now, if the difference is greater than 1.9, such as in this case, 2.10, a complete transfer of electrons is possible. So, since there is a complete transfer of electrons, merong elements na mag-gain, merong elements na mag-lose. So, by saying that, this is an ionic bond. Now, using arrows, you have to show the complete transfer of electrons. So, sodium, uh, Lewis, symbol, Lewis symbols right here, chlorine Lewis symbols right here. So, what are you going to do? So, just uh, write an arrow. Yung tail ng arrow is uh, towards this electron from sodium. And then, yung head naman, arrow head naman is pointing towards its direction. Now, using an arrow, you have to show, uh, I, I, as I said, so now you have to also show the ions. So uh, I, I'm sorry, but for step number three, it's supposed to be show the ions form. So um, sodium will become positive because it lost negativity. Chlorine naman will become negative because it gained negativity. So ganun na lang isipin natin to easily um, remember this. So since sodium, sodium lost one negative charge, uh, sodium now will be assuming the um, electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. And in this case, it's neon. And then chlorine naman, uh, from only having se seven valence electrons, will now become stable following out the octet rule. Okay, so with the uh, eight electrons in its valence shell. Now, um, sodium, as I've said, became isoelectronic with neon. So... Um, the term isoelectronic means um, kapareho niya ng sodium yung electronic configuration ng neon after the bonding. Okay, so in the case of chlorine naman, it became uh, isoelectronic with argon. Okay. Okay, now for the fifth, uh, for the fourth step, you have to make five combinations that will result to ionic bonding by by following steps number one to step number three. So go ahead. I'll give you more time. If you need more time, uh, you can pause this video para magawa kayo ng uh, bonding ng uh, ng mga ele ng mga elements. Okay, so one metallic, one non-metallic, and you have to make sure that these combinations are not repeating. Go ahead. If you have decided to continue, that means you are done with your work. Okay, you're now ready to answer the following guide questions. Question number one, what kind of element forms cation after ionic bonding? 
Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next question. What kind of element forms an ion after ionic bonding? Question number two. If you need more time, you can pause this video. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to answer question number three. What do ions form after ionic bonding? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to answer question number 4. Did the atoms attain stability after ionic bonding? Yes or no? Explain your answer. I mean, that's supposed to be yours. So. If you need more time, you can pause this video. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next question. Question number 5. How can you tell that ionic bonding will take place between metals and non-metals? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready for the next and last question. Question number 6. Will all combinations of metals and non-metals form ionic bond? Yes or no? Why? Pause this video if you need more time. If you have decided to continue, that means you are ready to answer or to check your own work. The answer to question number 1 is, metals form cations because they completely transfer or give away electrons. The answer to question number 2 is nonmetals form anions because they attract electrons towards themselves or toward themselves. The answer to question number 3 ions form after ionic bonding because this type of bond involves complete transfer of electrons. The answer to question number four. Yes, after ionic bonding, the participating atoms attain the stable electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. The answer to question number five. Ionic bonding will take place between metal and non-metal with electronegativity difference of greater than 1.9. The answer to the last question, question number 6. Not all metal-nonmetal -metal combinations will result in an ionic bond. Only those electro with electronegativity difference of more than 1.9 will result to an ionic bond. Go ahead, you can count the number of uh, responses that you considered correct. And then of course, report your score on your sheets of paper. And do not forget that you are supposed to post this in Edmodo. You're done with activity number three, bonding by transfer of electrons. Now let's uh, have the discussion on electronegativity difference. Now, uh, can you please get your uh, your periodic table and try aluminum and chlorine? Try, you know, bonding them. I'll give you time uh, to, to do the bonding and I would like to answer the following question. Will they form an ionic bond? So yeah, you can pause this video and uh, do it. If you have decided to continue, that means uh, you you have done it already, okay, and it's supposed to look like this. So aluminum has an electronic electronegativity a value of 1.5, whereas chlorine has an electronegativity value of 3.0. So based from the difference of the electronegativity values of aluminum and chlorine, the difference is only 1.5. Okay, so 1.5, hindi uh, masyong mabot ng 1.9 pataas, so hindi siya ionic bonding. These two elements cannot form an ionic bond. Why was that so? Because there is not enough energy to, com to facilitate the complete transfer of electrons. Instead, another form is formed, another bond is formed, the covalent bond, in which uh, sharing of electrons takes place. So, yung pag-share ng, ano, ng aluminum ng electrons sa chlorine will help aluminum and chlorine become 
stable. So yeah. Always remember the following. If the electronegativity difference is greater than 1.9, 1.9, the bond is going to be ionic bond, and there will be a complete transfer of electrons. Okay, however, if there is a electronic electronegativity difference that's greater than 0.4 but less than 1.9, there will be polar covalent bond. And if there is an electronegativity difference less than 0.4, it will be considered a non-polar bond, fully covalent bond. And that ends uh, the discussion on electronegativity difference. So, in this uh, session, you were able to do activities and participate or listen to discussions or lectures on explaining that will help you uh, explain the formation of ionic and covalent uh, bonds. Right, so we're done with the discussion on octet rule, activity number three, bonding by transfer of electrons, discussion, electronegativity, difference. This is still Sir Carlos, and this is the Knowledge Catalog Master of All. So I hope that you are still learning a lot of things or a sufficient amount of things from, these, uh, from this series, and I hope that I'll be seeing you in the next video. Do not forget to support this, uh, this channel by liking this video, leaving a positive comment in the comment section, or by hitting um, the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified once I upload a new material. I'll see you in the next one.